This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. You're listening to Monday's episode of The Archers from BBC Radio 4. Oh, Mum. I know, Ben. I look like I've done 12 rounds. Come on, sit down, both of you. I've got the kettle on. Uh, I don't know, Ben. I, I might just go straight to bed. All right, well, just hold on until Josh comes in. He'll help me get you upstairs. He's just letting Pip know you're home. I don't know why I'm so cold. You've gone quite pale. Come here, Dad, near the Arga. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, David. It's all right, though. All right, dear. Mum, Mum, it's okay. You're both home now, and I'm going to look after you. I'll fill some hot water bottles, sort out your bed so you're comfortable. Dad, you're shaking. Do you think you can sit down? Uh, I... uh, Maybe not, no. My knee is... um, ah, It's not great. Do you know if you've taken all the painkillers you're allowed? I think they gave some more to Josh. All right, good. Your mum got the full force of the airbag. It's really... It's brutal. Like being punched in the face. It's my elbow that hurts the most. Neck. Let me see. (sighs) Josh said the car hit something. What was it? The rain was bad and there were trees, woods. Seems like a lifetime ago. (sighs) The rain was coming down so fast. And then something ran out, straight out. I yelled and... It wasn't there, and then it was. A deer, I think. I hit it full on before I'd even break. The medics told me the car was in the ditch. Yeah. And they said you need complete rest. Yeah, but we've got to get the barn done first. Get the cows in. Are you joking? Look at the state of you. You're not doing anything. Absolutely. Unless you want to end up with permanent damage. Oh. Oh. About 104. I've never been so tired. Here, Ben. This is what the doctors gave me for that. Painkillers. Instructions. <clears throat> OK. You can each take two of these. They should help you get some sleep. And you have to listen to Ben, because he's a nurse. <laughs> oh, Ben, tomorrow's your first day on placement. And you're still up at four in the morning. You'll, you'll never survive on next to no sleep. Actually, I think that's pretty much part of a nurse's job description. <laughs> now, come on. Bed. Everyone. I'll take the toast up now. I mean, they both claim to have slept, but I don't believe them. Well, there is something I can do. Delivering breakfast in bed. Oh, you don't have to, Gran. Finish your tea. In fact, let's send Rosie. She'll cheer them up. I just can't believe no one's got to wake me. I still like to think of myself as being of some use. But what could you have done in the middle of the night? Uh, We didn't want to worry you. I can cope with worry, Pip. I might be a bit shaky on my legs, but I'm not feeble. I could at least have kept Ben company. What's that, Gran? Oh, Ben. Mm. You look very smart. (laughs) First day at Borsetshire General. What will you be doing? Probably not that much today. I think I'll meet my practice assessor. Basically the one who can pass or fail me. Then lucky to have you. Mum said she'd never have got any sleep if you hadn't sorted her pillows. Got her comfortable. I don't really know if I should go in today. I feel like I'll be more useful at home. Oh, ben, you have to go. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on them. And Pip, I know you'll have an awful lot on your plate this oh, week. Yeah, I've been making lists. Working out how we'll cope. You'll have to get help. You can't cover everything with two people down. I'm going to ring round. It's number three on my list. Well, Leonard's on his way over, so we'll get Rosie ready and take her to nursery. Oh, Gran, will you? Of course. It's from Josh. He's spoken to the car insurance people 
And Pip's rearranged the carbon audit meeting for next week. Oh. Does he say whether she managed to get anyone to help out? No, uh, he doesn't. I oh, know Ed and Eddie aren't for your week. Uh, and the agency's uh, struggling for staff. And Pip doesn't have Toby to help with Rosie. <sighs> this couldn't have happened at a worse time. <sighs> Don't know about that. At least there's no milking. Or carving, or lambing. Ow! Oh. Is it your elbow? Me neck. Yeah. Let me sh- shift your pillows a bit. Oh. 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 Oh, thanks. I'm not sure how Ben did it this morning. But I think I actually managed to doze off for a bit. Oh. Ruth. I'm so sorry. What for? For this, for doing this to you. I can't bear seeing you in so much pain. Oh, don't be daft. None of this was your fault. If I hadn't had that champagne, I might have seen the deer sooner. I might have stopped quicker. You had one small glass when we arrived. You didn't even drink it all. I know. There's no way you were over the limit. But our kids don't drink at all if they're driving. <sighs> I just keep thinking what would have happened without seatbelts or airbags. Stop torturing yourself. The kids are right. For today... We just have to rest. I might even have a bath. Can't remember the last time I had a bath in the middle of the day. After Ben was born. Oh, I remember that. I was holding him, singing, pacing. I was determined to leave you in peace. And now our baby's starting his own big adventure. Yeah. And Josh and Pip are managing things on the farm. I hope they're okay out there. Probably still squabbling. Uh, Come here. What? I need a hug. Oh. Oh, sorry. Money. I'm not sure I can. Would holding hands do instead? Yeah. <laughs> I think the painkillers are kicking in again. I might even sleep a bit. Mm. David. Yeah? I love you. I don't know how that nursery teacher keeps a straight face. I'd be cracking up all day with the things she chatters on about. When did Rosie learn so much about the large intestine? I've no idea. Jill, is everything all right? I just can't understand why they didn't wake me. You're 91. So you agree with them I'm too old to be useful. Now, that's not what anyone thinks. And Ben's a thoughtful lad. He'll have weighed it up and realised you'd be better off well-rested so you could help this morning. And when I tried to tell David he needs to trust Pip and Josh with the farm, he snapped at me. Said he didn't need me telling him how to cope. He's in shock, they both are. His knee's worse than he's letting on. Josh told me how the steering wheel almost crushed it. He really should have ice on it. He'll ask if he needs ice. He might not think to. Jill... I'm pretty sure what you're doing is called helicopter parenting nowadays. (laughs) Never heard of it. And I bet you've planned out exactly what they need to eat for a swift recovery. My chicken soup. That's another thing. When I sent it to Ruth, she said she'd got a heart set on beans on toast. Oh, sacrilege. (laughs) I just want what's best for them. Which today is beans on toast. So that's what will make them. Pip! Oh, thank goodness. You're back. What needs to be done? Uh, The Herefords' housing is still dry, which is something at least. But the flooding around the drain is just as bad. Dad wants us to service the milking parlour and order replacements, would you believe? He was going to start it today and he's obsessing about it, so add that to your list. Well, it's not just my list. Um, I literally can't run the farm on my own. I know that. That's why I'm here. 
But I, I can't just abandon the hens either. No, I don't expect you to. Right. So what's first? Uh, I should go up to Long Meadow, open up a bale for the outwintering cows. Um, can you check on the sheep at home farm? I'll do it on my way to North Borsetshire with the eggs. Mm. And I'll book in a service for the bulk milk tank. Keep Dad happy. Honestly, oh, we should have got the barn ready last week in good time. I wasn't happy with the heifers being out in last night's rain, and today doesn't look any better. Do you think they'll be OK, Mum and Dad? The, the hospital wouldn't have let me bring them home, would they, if, if they were worried? I don't know. I mean, seeing the bruising on Mum's face was a bit of a shock. We just have to cope, don't we? Hmm. <sighs> I'll try and find some time later this afternoon to come back and help with the barn. OK. Uh, good. Um, but before you do anything, uh, you should go in and have one of Leonard's completely brilliant breakfasts. I'd have been on my knees without it. I hear you do a mean fry-up, Leonard. Black pudding, bacon, mushrooms and eggs. Oh, <laughs> sounds great. But I don't have long. If a bacon sarnie is quicker, I'll be happy with that. Well, it's all in the frying pan. Sit down. Tea in the pot. Gran really knew what she was doing when she snagged you. <laughs> well, I'm normally only the cleaner-upper in the kitchen when your gran's baking. But breakfast has always been my thing. I could do you some French toast tomorrow, if you like. Oh, yeah? And how are you coping, Josh? I saw that list of pips. I'm all right. Well, it's bound to be a struggle. And Pip never really believes that I just can't abandon the hens. I think she sees it as my pocket money hobby while she does the real farm work. <laughs> well, now you've both got to cover for Ruth and David. Too right. I'll do what I can, but keeping the hens in profit is tough. It's a real balancing act, and I'm not always sure I'm up to it. Well, from what I've heard, your mum and dad think you're doing a grand job. But there's so much to think about. Like when I failed to keep proper records because I was too busy, it nearly ruined me. I really do have to keep on top of things this time. And I'm sure you will, even if it means burning the midnight oil for a few days. <laughs> but that's even more of a reason to take a breather now and tuck into this. You're right. No good getting stressed. Well, it's only day one and already you and Pip have started to work things out. I think you'll find you've got this. As uh, people seem to say. <laughs> <laughs>